let's look at coat colors and patterns for our feline friends. Learning objectives. Name the possible coat colors found in cats and give a breed example where applicable. List six coat patterns seen in cats. Identify them. Describe and identify four types of tabby markings and give a breed example for each. Identify the different color points associated with Siamese and Himalayan breeds. Coat colors that we have. We have white, which technically isn't a color. So white is a weird one, and they don't necessarily fully understand the white occurring in, in animals. White is known as a mask. So white essentially is masking all other colors. We have black. We have red. We have blue. We have cream. We have brown. Now white is, or sorry, white. Uh, blue is a dilute black, and cream is a dilute red. So the genetics of colors can get really, really interesting and really dynamic, and there's a lot that plays into it. So we're only going to brush the surface here. So white, we talk about as uh, capital W, black base colors, capital B, red base colors, capital O, and we have, and there we go, those are the variations of red. So for black, we have black dominant, blue is diluting gene, brown is recessive, and then we have light, gene, uh, light brown, which is essentially a diluted recessive black gene. Red, we have cream, which is the, oh, sorry, the diluting gene, which is secondary to red, the dominant. Sorry, I think I said red. I meant cream is the diluting gene. So again, the variations, we've got the cream is a variation of red, and the gray or the blue is a variation of black. So the white gene is an absence of pigmentation. It overrides all other genes. So that's why they call it a mask, essentially. So it's masking the gene itself. So regardless of whatever color typically would show up, if there's a white gene present, then it's going to override all other genes. Some cats with this gene are deaf, plus or minus depigmentation of the iris. So if, I know that one student had asked about that, the poor eyesights in cats. So specifically, if they get the gene where they have depigmentation of the iris, i.e. it remains a really light blue blue color, then in that specific eye they can get poor eyesight. So there is a connection. Somebody had asked about a connection between white cats and poor eyesight. So I wouldn't say it's overall white cats have poor eyesight, but definitely if they also have that, the gene interpretation where they get that lack of color in their iris, then yes, in that specific eye they can have poor eyesight. The odd-eyed, so the white eye, is often deaf on the side of the blue eye. So that when they have uh, bicolor eyes, so when they have a, a really light blue or a white eye and then a brown eye, um, they are often deaf in that ear that's associated with the same side as that eye. These little guys as well, unfortunately, are more prone to skin cancer. And this is all genetic linkages. So then we get white spotting, and that comes from a little bit of a different gene. We'll call that S gene. And that's when they end up as either calico or uh, spotted with mackerel or bicolor. We have a black gene. B, so black is dominant, and when present, the cat will be black. Small b is recessive. So two small b's will have a brown cat, and capital B, black, is dominant. The red gene is carried on X chromosome, so it's sex-linked. So X, of course, being fem female. Two X's equals female. XY is male. Red gene is dominant to black gene, so it overrides the black gene. Males only have one X chromosome compared to females. If the male carries the gene at all, he will be red. So if a male, because a male would be X color code Y, so if a male has X, O, Y, i.e. they're carrying the O gene, then regardless, because they only have one color availability in their gene, they will be orange. 
A female has to carry two dominant orange genes to be red. Otherwise, she will be tortoiseshell or calico. We have six basic varieties of coat pattern. So we have solid, which is solid black, solid white, um, solid brown it can be, so that's the diluted version. We have tabby, we have bicolor, and we have tortoiseshell. We have tricolor, which is also called calico, and we have color points. Now most animals, when they're solid color, you can get a solid black, you can get a solid white, but most otherwise they are either ticked or tabbied of some of some form when they're red when they have that red coloring to them so the tabby pattern is the very most common pattern it's the pattern seen in wild cats and large cats and we have four variations of this specific pattern so we have our striped i.e. mackerel tabby so mackerel tabby, these guys, stripings, and most often, it's harder to see on this little one, but most often you get those very, those very direct stripings down their sides and across their chest. And that's a mackerel or striped tabby. We have blotched or marbled tabby, which I think is so beautiful. And those are the really big uh, marbled stripes that come up in the coat. So they're not specifically striped, striped, striped like a tiger down the sides. They're marbled and blotched all throughout the body. We have spotted tabbies and we have ticked tabbies. So spotted tabbies, typical of Bengal, where they have essentially just spots all over them and they might have some stripes as well quite often and then ticked tabbies are kind of interesting ticked tabbies their coat at first glance might look like a solid color and the example would be an Abyssinian typically have well they always have ticked tabby coats and what it is in fact they have either agouti or non agouti hairs whereby the hairs themselves are banded with different colors so when a hair is showing up, if you look closely at these hairs, the hairs themselves are striped, which is kind of interesting. So looking at the hair itself, it has a striped pattern throughout. Whereas all of these guys, it's a, a mixing of either white or black or orange hairs, whereas the ticked have striping to their hair specifically. This is a handy little picture, I thought. So again, we, we can look down at the modified tabby patterns. Try not to focus on those right yet. Focusing on the mackerel tabby, the classic or blotched tabby, spotted tabby, and tick tabby. Those are definitely the starters. So we'll just go back. We've got those four main varieties. And then essentially the subclassifications, we've got the agouti, which is a non-striped tabby, which is a form of a ticked tabby, so don't worry too much about that. And then of course we've got our subclassifications, we've got broken mackerel stripes, we've got marbled or clouded tabby, those are really, really beautiful cats. We've got ocelloid spots, candle flame or braided stripes, uh, sokokis tabby, and rosetted tabby. So all sorts of different types of tabby, but we'll, we'll stay true to the four classic categorizations. And just to note too, I'll talk a little bit about it, but tabbies have an M on their head. Okay, so this is a nice little picture to identify to start with. So when identifying cat in general as, as being tabby pattern, we're always looking for that M on their face. And this is a good example of the ticked tabby, whereby their hair is color-coded, so their actual hair itself has different colors to it. And there's a tick tabby, nice little Abyssinian. So they've got this tabby mask, they have dark lines extending from the back of the eyes, so that's the lateral canthus of their eyes, toward the back of their head. They have an M on their forehead, okay, so that's the M on their forehead there, and then that nice stripe that extends from the lateral canthus, so the corner of their eye to the back of their head. If we look at these little guys, they all have that happy little M. And you can see that beautiful tabby stripe there. Okay, even this tick tabby, although he doesn't have stripes elsewhere, he has the M shape on his head. Many apparently solid colored cats have tabby markings. The only solid color where this cannot occur, so it will never occur, is in the white cat. So otherwise you can get black cats that look black from afar and then when you look up close in the light they actually have tabby markings deep and dark. 
So like this guy, and the way I always tell it, uh, looking in the light when I have a cat in the clinic, is I look for the M on their forehead, and you can see slight tabby markings there, and quite often too you can see it in their tails, so they have their rings in the tail. Same with this guy, little M on his forehead. So then we get tortie cats. Tortoiseshell cats are black and red, and tortoiseshell cats are female cats. Now there are rare, rare, rare instances of them being male cats, but it's a genetic abnormality and it ends up being a cat that has XXY. So they have one too many sex chromosomes and they end up being sterile. So they're born, they're unable to reproduce most often, which is very, very rare in general that you have a male tortoiseshell cat. So looking at these guys, we have a regular tortie on the left, and then we have a dilute tortie, which is blue and cream. So that's that dilution of the orange and of the, the black. And sometimes they'll have little tabby markings as well, and people tend to call those torbies. I just call them torties. And a tortie would be X chromosome, O, X chromosome. So again, we're looking at females. That's an example of a Tor B, where they have a little M and slight striping. Tricolor cats. So tricolor cats, we've got calico. They have two colors plus white, black, red, and white. So that's a beautiful patch. That's a beautiful calico, patch, patch calico. And then we can have the dilution version as well, which is blue, cream, and white. And then you can have interesting patches where it's actually tortoiseshell patches. So it's all mottled tortoiseshell patches and white. <clears throat> These cats as well are linked genetically to be female. So that's a tortoiseshell in white. So this is deceiving this cat. Oopsies. This cat here is deceiving. It looks as though it would be a tortoise shell because you're seeing a modeling of the red and of the black and of the cream. But as soon as you add white to that mix, it's now considered a calico. So if they have XOX and XOY, so we've got female um, calico or and then, sorry, red male then how do we get a red tortoise shell or tricolor? So we have two recessive genes present, which could include orange, but the recessive O can also be non-orange. So if it was O, or sorry, X capital O, X capital O, because the females have two color variations in their genetic pattern, then we'd end up with a female orange cat. <clears throat> if we had X capital O Y, then that would be a male orange cat. But because we have two recessive, we have uh, X, small o, X, and probably small o, and then X, small o, Y. In that case, because they are recessive, it could result in some orange, but because it's not the dominant orange, we also have the option for it to result as non-orange, which would be black. So then we have these beautiful kitties. Whoopsie daisies. We've got color point cats. So their face, paws, and tail are darker than the rest of the body. Temperature related. Um, just going back to touch on tortoise shells and tricolors. The other thing that they know, um, whether how they've nailed it down specifically, but in a lot of these cats with their colors through genetics, we have behavioral ge um, genetics, so behavioral characteristics attached to genetics as well. And the tortoise shell and the calico have a grumpy cat <laughs> behavioral genetic component as well. So when we start seeing those color variations in these female cats, we also tend to get some challenging behavior with these kitties. <coughs> so we don't want to prejudge them when they come into the clinic or into the grooming salon, wherever they might be coming, but at the same time, you know, they do get a little bit of a bad rap because they have a very, very short window of opportunity. So here's an example of a color point cat. So they have a beautiful coat and then they have on their face, ears, paws, and tail darker areas. So this is your typical Siamese. This is a seal point Siamese cat. The lighter variation, so the diluted variation of that is the chocolate point Siamese cat. We have a flame point Siamese cat. 
where they have the orange showing up in their ears, tails, nose, and sometimes paws. And then we have the cream color throughout the rest of their body. We have a blue point Siamese cat, which is the diluted gene. And then we have a lilac, and that's, that's even further diluted from the blue. So lilac is a very nice light, light, light blue, uh, essentially beautiful gray. We also have this one. This is a torty point Siamese, which is really beautiful. So again, looking at their face and their ears and their tail, they have that tortoise shell modeling. This one here is a lynx point Siamese, whereby they have essentially tabby stripes only on their face, ears, tail, and legs. And their body is generally lighter, much, much lighter than their legs and their face. And this is a fat tabby cat. <laughs> Summary. So having a look at the coat colors, we've got white, black, red, and then combinations of either. And again, the black, the dilution of a black, so the diluted version is a blue or brown, and the diluted version of red is cream. The genetics of coat colors, we have white, black, oops, sorry, and red. When we're looking at coat patterns, we have solid, we have tabby, bicolor, torty, calico, color point, and again, just remembering that as we look through these coat patterns, there are definitely variations on all of those. So there's sort of sub-categorization of all of them. So within them, some people will say uh, brown patch tabby, um, uh, tuxedo, that would be bicolor, where they have that white on their chest and on their face. Okay, so lots of variations when it comes to, to coat coloring, coat patterning, and all of that is taken into account, especially when it comes to breeding, because breed, people have specific goals in mind when breeding purebred cats to meet the requirements for breed standards for specific coat patterns and specific coat colors. It's a beautiful kitty. So that's a nice seal point, Siamese. Self-test. Breeds, coat patterns, and colors. So what do we think this is? This is clearly Siamese, and this is a nice seal point Siamese. So they've got that really, really dark, either really dark brown or almost black. Typically it's dark brown throughout their face, their ears, and their tail, and then a lighter color to the rest of the body. This is a solid color. So this is a cream, a cream Persian. Now that being said, it could be slightly debated that it might be heading toward the flame point. But I would still debate that this is a cream because it has, um, it's not as prominent as a typical flame point would be. So it's not as prominent with the darkness in color so much around the face and tail specifically. So to me, it looks like a solid. This is another beautiful little cat. This is a rag doll. So this is a blue point. And then we have, of course, the Abyssinian, which is a ticked tabby. And then this little guy here, we have a solid. And that, it's hard to tell from this picture, but he's solid black or solid dark, dark, dark brown. And then this beautiful guy here, common coat for Bengal, is a spotted tabby. And of course, our friend with a little bit of saucy behavior, this is a tricolor, also known as a calico. This is a beautiful blotch tabby with a diluted blue, or with, with blue, because blue is diluted black, so blotch tabby. Again, this little one's tricky. It's a tricolor, also known as a calico, because remembering that even though it looks like a tortoise shell, as soon as we add that white to it, it becomes calico. And then we've got this interesting little guy. This guy is an example of a variation of the striped tabby. And then, of course, our solid. And then this is my cat. It's hard to tell because it's a black and white photo or a sepia tone, but she is a bicolor. So she has black over most of her body and then white in the feet.
And then, of course, this cutie patoots is a nice, beautiful striped tabby. I just wanted to show you the one other. So this is another interesting uh, formation of color. So this is called a smoke. And again, it's a subcategorization. So it's a sub uh, variation of some of these colors. So Joey, the smoke tabby cat. So essentially a smoke is kind of like that agouti, that ticked coloring whereby the hair itself has two colors on the hair. So each piece of hair has two colors on it. So from a distance, these cats look Typically it's black, you can get different colored tab, um, smokes, but often it's black. And they look like a black cat from afar, and you might see some lightning around their face, and you should be able to see the tabby stripes. And then when you rub their fur the wrong way, I'll show you what happens, you can see that the fur underneath is white. So the end piece of their hair, each individual hair is a beautiful black color, and then underneath they have this beautiful white hair. So that's called a smoke. <laughs>